Hello and good morning and welcome to the Get a Ladies final review for the Georgia Milestones test. So this review is going to be focused on SLED, which is what we're going to use for narrative writing. And some of the things I'm going to say are things that you have already known and practiced and mastered, and this will just be a very easy review. And for some of you, I might be saying some things that are new, and that's okay, because even if I'm saying it and it's new, there's still time for you to practice these small things, because nothing's going to be crazy. It's going to be all manageable things that you can do to make the milestones quicker and easier and better for you. So really quickly, I'm going to attempt to use a whiteboard, because I'm at my house today instead of the office, so I only have the materials I have here. But let's review really quickly what goes into SLED, okay? So got to figure out my camera here. The SL, we know that S and L in SLED stands for sensory language, right? So that includes the five senses. And so if anybody forgets that on test day, remember, you can always use your face. You can say, okay, well, what can my main character see, smell, taste, touch, and hear? Of course, I use my face and I use my hands. But you can kind of use that to, to remind yourself what the five senses are. Remember, I always put touch slash feel when I do my brainstorming. We're gonna do a sample brainstorming here in a minute. But I always do touch slash feel because I wanna talk about things I can feel with my body and touch, like I can feel this jacket. But I also wanna talk about what I feel on the inside. So at this moment in the story, am I excited? Am I curious? Am I nervous? Am I angry? Like what am I feeling on the inside? So both what I can touch and what I can feel and of course what I can hear. The E in SLED stands for events. And if you are revising a story, then the main events in the story have to stay the same. So whatever it says, if it says revise the first two paragraphs, whatever is already happening in those first two paragraphs still has to happen. But your job is to make those events better. If they're asking you to write an extension to the story, like write a conclusion or write what happens the next day. Then those are your own creative events, but they have to be consistent with the story, with the characterization and the events that have been happening so far. So those four little dots that you see on my brainstorming, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, on this, on this board right now, illustrate that if you are coming up with your ideas, you're going to come up with three or four events. OK, they're going to be part of your writing. And again, I'm going to model this with an organizer soon. The D that see, sled has two Ds because my, my sled, remember, is extra special. Um, one D stands for dialogue. It, pretty much most of you should know what that is by now, right? What the, when the characters are talking to each other. This D is the most important one because a lot of people leave it out. Um, this D is adjectives, adverbs, and strong verbs, OK? These are details that you go back in and add to your brainstorming list. and or when you're finished writing and you've completed your rough draft, you go in and you add these details back to your rough draft. So this is making sure everything in your story is just has a describing word in front of it, okay? And that all your verbs are really strong. So this is SLED. And if those of you who have been in any of my classes know we always sing it. I don't care if you're eight or 18, we sing SLED. And um, we do, we say sensory language, events stay the same. Details and dialogue. Sensory language, events stay the same details and dialogue. And as silly as that may sound to some of you, it really does help it stay in your brain so that you can do the next step, okay? So when you receive, when you get to the milestones, your teacher is only allowed to give you, sorry, there's this weird light behind me. I don't know how to get rid of it right now, but um, your teacher is gonna give you a blank sheet of white paper, okay? And that's all he or she is able to give you. If you're doing SLED, okay, TIG is something different. I'll show you TIG in a separate video, but if you're doing SLED, you take the paper vertical, so not this way, but long ways, and you fold it in half, okay? So if you're doing this with me right now in class, you can just go ahead, take your paper, fold it down the middle. I learned in another class recently, they called this the hot dog fold, okay? So then you open it up like this. On the left side, at the very top, you're going to make an E. And on the other side, you're gonna write SL, comma, D, comma, D, so it will look like this, okay? You'll have an E on one side, and then you'll have S, L, D, D on the other side. So when I, when it comes time to brainstorm, my answers, or I'm sorry, yeah, well, yeah, my answer, my story, I'm going to have at least three or four events. So you can see these little bullet points. That's what I'm using for my events, 
Okay, right down through here. And then on my see, smell, taste, touch side, I want to make sure I space everything out. Is the suspense killing you? This is what I do on the other side. Make sure you've got a couple inches or so between each thing, right? See, smell, taste, touch, taste. Notice that I have touch slash feel because we want to include both what we touch on the outside and feel on the inside. Here and dialogue. And there is a difference between here and dialogue. Here are sounds you hear in your story. Remember that amazing word, onomatopoeia? You get huge points for that. So anytime there's, and there's not a story that exists that you can't use onomatopoeia, okay? There's always a sound. So it can be, if you were walking up the stairs, it could be the sound of the stairs creaking. It can be, if there was, um, uh, if you were running, it could be your, your, your shoes hitting tap, tap, tap on the ground, right? There's always sounds that we can say, and you can always spell those any way you want. So um, the, the sounds go under here. Dialogue is when the characters talk. Okay, so now if you look at your organizer, you have E, the events on one side, you have SL, which is the sensory language, and you have one of your Ds, which is dialogue. The other D doesn't come till later, because once we brainstorm what we see, smell, taste, touch in here, we go back and make sure every word has a describing word, and that describing word is the other D, the details, okay? All right, so I'm going to share my screen really quickly with a... Um, you may have read this story before. This is the fifth grade example. So if you're in third grade, I have another one I'm going to show you. And it really doesn't matter. Any grade can do any of these examples, okay? Um, but this is a story about Buddy the Cat, okay? And I'm not going to read the story right now with you. You're going to go back and you're going to read this on your own with your teacher so that this video isn't crazy long. Or you can pause it right now if you're doing this in class and you can read the story. But this is about Buddy, a, a cat, who is sneaking into... Um, the next door neighbor's house and they're trying to figure out how he gets in. So the two kids are kind of trying to solve the mystery of how Buddy gets into the house. But if we scroll down to the, I'm gonna skip all the multiple choice questions because you can see this is an actual milestones. And I'm gonna to go to the question for us for writing. It says, this is an extended response, okay? And it says, um, rewrite this part of the story using more descriptive details. Think about how Angela and Carlos felt as well as what they saw, smelled, and heard. So they've given you a very specific part of the story. Now, what I want to caution you about is you are only to rewrite this part of the story, okay? So a lot of kids want to just rewrite the whole story or they want to go on some tangent and tell their own story. It's very important that you start the way this excerpt starts and you end the way this excerpt ends. That is my advice for any time they ask you to rewrite a portion of a story. Start the same way they started, in the same way they ended, because that keeps you on track so that you don't talk about a bigger part of the story that you're not supposed to talk about. Then once that has established, everything that happens in the middle, you get to develop and you want to add events to the pre-existing events, right? So like, I've seen a lot of kids do this where they just copy what's here and add some adjectives. That is not going to be a good score at all. Okay. You've got to go in and add additional events. Okay. Don't, don't do, it has to be consistent with the story, but like, you can't be like, oh, and then they went to six flags. No, it has to be consistent with the story. We're going to practice it in a second. Okay. And you, your sensory language shouldn't just be adjectives that are added in. You need to think what does Carlos and Angela, or what, do, you know, what do they see, smell, taste, touch, hear, right? Um, and what might else they say to each other? So if I'm doing this prompt, then on the events side of my paper, I would start out with, okay, the other windows are closed, Carlos reported, but I can still solve this mystery. I would start the exact same way with that exact same line. So I'm, I'm going to write down windows, closed, dot, 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 to remind myself I'm going to start the same way he did, okay? How, asked Angela, curious about her brother's next plan. Carlos always had an imaginative ideas. So I've got to think about what else is going to happen in my story. So in this story, and I'll paraphrase it in case you didn't get a chance to read it, but in this story, they think that the cat must be coming through a window. The cat has blue paint on his tail, and so they're thinking he must come through a window where there's been fresh paint, um, and so they're trying to kind of figure out what, um, 
what might have been the case, okay? Buddy really likes you, Carlos stated, staring at the contented cat in Angela's arms. If you go inside and call him, Buddy will want to come and see you. I'll follow him and discover his secret entrance. That's a good idea, Angela admitted. Reluctantly, she gently placed the cat in the grass and walked inside. Taking a deep breath, she began calling Buddy's name. Okay, so I know I'm going to end with taking a deep breath, right? I'm going to put that as my last bullet point. Now, in the middle, I have some leeway. I want the same basic events have to happen, okay? So I'm gonna put down what has to happen. So um, they, they have to decide. So Carlos has to talk about how Buddy really likes Anna. Anna has to put Buddy down. And then Anna has to call to Buddy. Those events are gonna stay the same, but I get to make them better. Now, what does Anna or what does Carlos see, okay, or at this time? So um, for example, um, Carlos, so they see the cat, we can describe the cat. They see Anna's face, right? When she's saying all this, like, oh, I don't I really wanna put him down. Um, we see the grass outside, we can describe the grass, we can describe that we, we see the windows are closed. We can describe the windows. What might they smell? They might smell freshly cut grass. Okay. Um, they might smell the cat. Maybe the cat doesn't smell so great and needs a bath. What might they taste? They might taste um, excitement. We could be figurative there. They might taste excitement because they're about to figure this out. Um, how, what might they feel with their hands? They can feel the cat, right? Um, they can what can they feel on the inside, right? They might be um, excited. I already kind of used that one though. They might be um, nervous to see if it's gonna work, right? What might they hear? They might hear the cat purring. I'm gonna write purr from the cat. They might hear the patter, 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 patter of the cat just like going across the grass or going or it could be swish swish in the grass i'm going to write swish swish in the grass and the cat might go patter patter on this on the concrete on this on the driveway coming into the house or something remember these are sounds that i can hear dialogue what might the characters say to each other that's not already here angela might say i'm nervous that buddy will go will run away Um, what other thing can Carlos say? Carlos could say, um, ready, set, go to buddy, like go, go find Anna. So I'm doing this very quickly and I have never done this prompt before actually. So this is a, a good example of me thinking it through with you, but now I have my list. Okay. I have my list of all the things I was saying as we were talking. Now it's when I do that other D. I go back and I add a describing word to everything. So I see a cat. Well, what does the cat look like? So I need to just be like an orange, fluffy, you know, if there's more words than that, maybe he's a little round. An orange, fluffy, round cat. Um, Anna's face. What is Anna's face? Maybe her, her, um, maybe her mouth drooped. when when uh, he said that she needed to put the cat down because it says she was reluctant, right? So her mouth drooped. Uh, let's see. The windows, you could describe the windows, the open blue, because you don't know this if you haven't read it, but there was some blue paint, okay? So the open blue windows. The grass, we can describe the grass as high because it hasn't been cut in a while. Um, or we could describe it as freshly cut, however we wanted. We have freshly cut later under smell. Um, as we get further down, there might be more edges, but you get the point. You go back through your list and you're adding describing words to it. Then you kind of say in your head how you want to tell your story. So I would say something, I know I'm going to start and end the same. So I might say, the windows are closed, Carlos reported, but I can still solve this mystery. He and Anna were nervous that they hadn't figured this out yet, but excited and determined to find a way. Um, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Carlos had an idea. He turned to Anna and said, hey, buddy really likes you. Let's, and then I can go back into my text and get some ideas. 
let's see if you put him down and call to him. You put him down outside on the freshly mowed grass and I will make sure he stays there. You go inside and call his name and then I'll be able to watch how he gets to you. Anna's mouth dropped. She was sad that she had to put down the orange fluffy round cat named Buddy. She loved holding him and become very attached to him. Purr, he said in her arms. How can I put him down, she said to, to Carlos. Reluctant, reluctantly, she set him down on the grass and heard the swish, swish, swish as his cute little paws walked towards Carlos. I'm nervous, but he will run away, she said. He won't, he won't. I'll watch him. Go inside, said Carlos. Anna took a deep breath and then called out to Buddy. Carlos turned to Buddy and said, ready, set, go. Anna could hear the patter, patter. And that's how it ends, right? Because we can't let, we can't keep going, right? Because um, something we, we, we can't tell the rest of the story. And I could have ended literally with the last thing that the original story said, which was taking a deep breath. She began calling Buddy's name. All I did was add on and she heard the pitter patter of his paws. The point is the same thing happened, but I told it in my own words, right? I didn't copy do not copy what the original story says. Do not copy. Can't say that enough. I said it in my own words. And I added my own details. I added my own dialogue. I added my own see, smell, taste, touch in here. I added my own adjectives. Okay. That will get you a four, the highest score they offer. Okay. Um, the only other, so that's it for that one. I want y'all to practice that one if you have time. The only other example that I was going to show you, I'm going to stop sharing that screen. And I'm gonna share one other screen with you if I can shortly here. I may not have it pulled up actually. There's another one that's a, that is a conclusion. Okay, so I'm not, I don't have that one available right now, it looks like. So there's another one, it's called Buried Treasure. I'll send it to any teacher who wants to, just email me at lalanarichards at gmail.com. That's L-A-L-O-N-A -L Richards at gmail.com. And I'll send you the Buried Treasure text. Um, it's also one of the, the past milestones ones. But this one, the kids are asked to write a conclusion. So anytime you're asked to write a conclusion, I wanna make sure you write a, conclusion. It's not a chapter two. It's not a whole bunch of details. It's a conclusion. So in a conclusion, you need to resolve the story and you need to say how the characters feel at the end or how they're doing at the end. Make sure you do those things. Also, a lot of times the prompts will tell you what to do. So with this one about buried treasure, they literally say, write a conclusion to the story where Anna and Michael go back into the attic to look for, to see what else they can find. Make sure you describe the attic and, and the dialogue between Anna and Michael. So they've really told you exactly what to do. They've told you your events. Like they told you, you have to go back to the attic. You have to find something, right? You have to tell what the attic looks like and you have to talk to each other, Anna and Michael, right? So for that one, same thing, E on one side, sensory language, details and dialogue on the other side, okay? This never changes. But under my events, it's going to be like, how did they go back to the attic? Did Anna say to Michael, I'll race you back to the attic? Did Michael say, I wonder what else we could find, right? So first I'd have to say how they got back to the attic. Then I'd have to say, what did they find in the attic? Then I'd have to say maybe what did they do with it? Like once they found it, what did they decide to do with it? And then how did they feel about it at the end? So I would probably have about four bullets of just basic events that were going to take place in my conclusion to keep me on track. So my conclusion doesn't become a chapter two, right? So I stay true to a conclusion. Then on the other side, I would go through and I would write on here, see, smell, taste, touch, hear, dialogue. I would brainstorm. When they get to the attic, what do they see in, see in the attic? Do they see spiders and spider webs? Do they see boxes, right? What do they see up there? What do they smell? Do they smell dust and mold? Like, what do they smell? What do they taste? They taste dusty air? Ugh. What do they see, smell, taste, touch? Touch, they can, they can touch the, the splintery railing. Um, they can touch the stairs, the creaky stairs. What do they feel? They feel excitement when they find something. Like maybe they find gold. Maybe they find a sword. Maybe they find a magic portal to take them to another place. Um, maybe they find a hidden passageway that takes them into the walls of the house. What do they feel when they find this? And then what do they hear? Do they hear the, 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 the stairs going creak? Do they hear the, the mice in the attic going creak? And then how do you spell those things? You can spell them any way you want, right? You can sound them out. Um, there's no points taken off for onomatopoeia spellings. So then what's the dialogue? What does Anna say to Michael? If they found gold, Anna might say, Michael, what are we going to do with this gold? And then, and Michael might say back, 
um, well, I, I saw that there's a homeless shelter down the street from our school. We should use this gold to buy the children toys. And so then the story ends with them running down the stairs with the bag of gold on their shoulder to head to the homeless school. And they feel joy and happiness in their hearts. So don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be super long. The point is it has to have dialogue. It has to have details. It, ha it has to have the, the, the see, smell, taste, touch, and hear sensory language. It must have adjectives, okay? If you just use SLED as your checklist, and you follow this little outline to keep you on track, you are guaranteed to do awesome. So those are two different examples, revising a portion of the story and then writing a conclusion. The very last one I'll mention is there are stories where you will read two informational passages and have to write a narrative based on those informational passages. So for example, one of them um, that, that I can send you if you'd like is two pen pals. One is a letter written from someone who lives in Chile and the other one is someone who lives in New York City. They write a letter to each other about what a day in their life is like. And then the assignment is to write a story about when one of them visits the other. So either you're going to Chile or you're going to New York and you have to use details from the um, article in your story. So for example, the, the little boy who lives in Chile lives on a farm. So I can say what I see, smell, taste, touch, and hear on, on, that, on that farm. Um, and so you just, that's how you pull in details from the article um, and to your narrative is by doing stuff like that. So I know I ran through a lot, but those are just some last minute tips because you're probably going to be asked to revise a portion of the story, write a conclusion, or write a story based on some informational passages. Teacher, students, parents, any of you are invited to reach out to me this week. I know Milestone starts next week for a lot of people. So you are welcome to reach out to me with any questions about what I just said, or if you would like a practice passage sent your way. I will do a separate video with some tips for TEAK, and I hope you guys have a great day and happy testing.